Hi, Neha. Hi, Alex. I said it right this time. You did. <laughs> it takes me a while. It's t- I'm I'm ridiculously like uh, cognitive like that. Sometimes I just sometimes I just what I see mm-hmm. I enunciate. So it takes my time to wrap around it sometimes, but I got it right. right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this will be focus podcast number fourteen. Welcome. Whoa! Thank you for having me on. So we have. Neha Sin. Mm-hmm. That is me. And that's short for? Sindhwani. <laughs> and when did that name come about? When did you come to that realization that this is going to be your stage well, name persona? I played a lot of open mics before I started playing shows. And when I was starting out, um, I found it very hard for me to say, my name is Neha Sindhwani, look me up on YouTube, because people didn't quite know how to spell Sindhwani, and it just wasn't feasible for me to spell it while I was on stage every time. Not enough wrap-up time as you're no. wrapping up the song. <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. But then um, I realized shortening it to Sin would be whimsical and fun, because I had a little black guitar, and I could really play off the whole, like... Sweet like honey, you know. Like bad. That's what exactly. Yeah. I like the, the bad. Bad, but it's whimsical because when I'm on stage, I'm just like flowery and pink yeah. and soft. It's the contrast. It's the different. It could be this way. Or it could be that way. Exactly. That's that's good. You need a balance. You can figure that out. At this age, it's pretty good. And it's also really fun when you can make the joke. The way you spell my name is Neha, like a hen backwards, and sin like sinner. I didn't even (laughs) see. Now you're blowing my mind already. (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) Sinful hen. (laughs) Sinful hen. That's a great way to go. (laughs) So we got this like, imagine, like, I don't know. It's this fireplace aquarium thing. Yeah. Um, Anyways, we're in the back of Avant Garde in Ottawa Mm -hmm. on, I have my geography is just awful it's but it's right in the market so we're absolutely like right at the top of the market on bessery street in the area where people need music and healing the most Mm. probably yes it's a rough area around here like i don't even see parts of toronto like this bad around here no for real they clean those fuckers up they got them the fuck out of toronto (laughs) they're like here's a few one-way bus hound greyhound tickets get out See, I doubt that because I grew up in Mississauga. No, I'm telling you, man. Toronto part, like it's it, there's pockets here and there once in a while, but now it's like it's all it's too much money. Mm, that's too much true. money at stake. That's actually very true. The last area is kind of like if you go on Queen East on yeah, like if you go from Young Street on Queen East, it's all desolate, like for blocks and blocks. But somebody owns all that, so eventually it's just gonna be shops and money and legalized weed shops and, and yeah. places to get munchies and stuff like that <laughs> and so go toronto proud of yeah <laughs> it's great it's fantastic so you did you grow up in ottawa here or where you No, i grew up in mississauga oh yeah you just said that <laughs> See? so right outside so toronto does. for 18 years until i came to university okay mm-hmm. cool and, and it's still home so i still go back to visit every now and then and when did music really get into you my entire life um i've always loved music i haven't always been good at music but i've always loved music and then in high school i got into my first talent show and realized that this could actually be a thing because me and my friend tried out you know for fun Mm -hmm. and then we got in and we were like what do we do now Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and so then we ended up getting into more talent shows and it went really well. And then I started freaking out and I was like, I can't go to school for music. What am I going to do? So instead I went to school for psychology. <laughs> like that was better. <laughs> hmm. Well, you could kind of break it down the same way. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then halfway through I switched into psych and music. Hmm. So a fun mix of things. And then I realized all I really ever wanted to do was play shows and open mics brought me true joy. So I created an online persona for myself, laid out like a bit of a plan of how I was going to go about being a musician in Ottawa. And I've been building it ever since. Yeah, Yeah, I think that's what it really comes down to is. Is this is probably for me, I don't know, I'm 40 years old and this is like the thing that makes me the most happy. 
it's weird it's a feeling to be on yeah. stage and it's like the open mic uh feeling too because i used to do it a lot like mm-hmm. maybe like seven years ago and you wait all this time you hang out all night mm-hmm. usually i had a few too many to drink and <laughs> then i get up late you know yeah. and then but you take home this this feeling this warm feeling of just like oh Excitement. i waited it out and i push through you know with something that i had really deep inside right Mm -hmm. you know that i had to get out it was no it's a pretty amazing feeling and then you it's like it's not it's not a i don't want to say addicting i don't say it's addiction or a word like that it's It's just like addicting well it's just kind of like you know where uh opportunities arise with that situation you know what yes. i mean it to me it's like it's more of, it's more of kind of like l- life lessons too if you just kind of like push through something mm-hmm. that's kind of aggravating and you're patient with stuff it's kind of translates into other stuff it does in your life too there's a lot you can take away from it just from other than doing open you know at least that's the way I see it for mm-hmm. me. That's So what, like, um, I know it's, even for me, people always told me, like, oh, you have a, a brand or whatever, or, like, what's your persona or something, and it, that takes a while mm-hmm. as an artist, and you just, you're still growing and growing and growing. Oh. You don't know what, I think I kind of know what style of artist I am right now, kind of, but it's that's still evolving too, right? Like, that's, that's continuing to change as well, you know? So where do you see yourself now as an artist? And do you feel like d- you're like you're honing in on something that's that's really defining you or something? Is that like, or is it like you s- still see that end game and you know there's steps to take to it? It's a long question, but it's like <sighs> the way I s- saw it, I saw it, foresaw it, things in the future you know that you it's hard to explain to people and the way you want to see yourself as an artist you know I see bits and pieces of the future and the way I see myself is as I'm growing yeah so what I saw a year or a year and a half ago is not what I see now it's constantly changing I think and it's all very based on where I am and what I've achieved and what I hope to achieve So I think, for example, um, actually a pretty big problem I've noticed within myself as a performer is I tend to be very hard on myself to the point where I'll set goals for myself. And then by the time I've achieved those goals, I've set new goals for myself. And I never acknowledge the fact that I've even achieved the goals to begin with. And the more goals I set, the more unattainable they are. And then the harder I am on myself as to why I'm not getting there. So it's something I'm trying to actively be better about because it leads to me being very negative, being like, well, why didn't I book this, this, this? Or why didn't I get into these festivals? Rather than the fact that I think a year ago today, I never would have even expected to have achieved half the things I've achieved in 2020 alone. Yeah. So it's just a little bit of a hard question because I think since also I'm 22 right now and I think what I see is the future in my music considering I started two years ago is just a little messy I don't know what to expect I've never been in the situation of you know being a musician that's before the way it's supposed to be exactly you're off the ra- <laughs> like you're off that's what it is and you figure out what works for you and what mm-hmm. you like and and you know what I was thinking about that outside I was having a, a puff and I was thinking like she's 22 or 23 and you've already done quite a few shows you know what i mean and that feels great because i've truly truly hustled to do them yeah and you're already like that's your thank you that's huge that's mass i hadn't started doing my own shows till i was like 30 so which i mean if it happens it's all that matters no like you're getting it out of like you're getting so much experience at such a young age that i also think it was just like a year ago my goal was book three shows every month that was my like goal for the month and then after i had my ep release it became easier to book three shows a month the first year was impossible i was not hitting that goal but after people had like my music in their hands and they could hear what I could produce and what I could do, it was a bit easier for people to find me and to be like, we like what you're putting out. We want you to come and play this show. And 
it's that whole thing where I never even acknowledged after like that that I was hitting my goal of three shows a month and now I'm far past three shows and it feels incredible but to me thank you bam high five. <laughs> that's good. well deserved no you're out hitting all these accolades and I was like yeah yeah and it's also this like kind of unhealthy habit where I have so many so many great musical friends great musical partners and acquaintances and people I'm meeting and I tend to hold myself to standards that they're at, even if we're not in the same, like, yeah, yeah, you know, genre or even like there have been bands and trios that I've been like, why am I not as successful as them? And it's like a hard thing to understand that I'm not. No, that's them. that's normal as artists. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but as as I think I've seen more artists and I've seen the success of artists climb through from like the same stage that i'm at to great success you know Mm -hmm. and uh it's really like empowering and and like and uh motivating to see somebody else do so well you know what i mean exactly holy crap that's amazing they went to the same places that i went to they were doing though like we were talking about the painted lady in toronto Mm -hmm. when that one first started going off and we talked about a a acquaintance of ours uh charlie Mm-hmm. And there was another young cat, Jeremy Albino, who used to go there. Oh my and god! And now he's so off the fucking charts. And he's he incredible. Used, like when I used to do my open mics, he used to come up to me and he's like, "Oh, that rapping is sick, man." So it's like, yeah. for him, for so, to see somebody so successful that had, like, um, so much nice things to say about me. You mm-hmm. know, it's like you see their success and you're like, Whoa, you're so proud of them. Cause you're like, Holy shit. That's you've seen their progression. And mm-hmm. so it's like, it's nice to see. It's nice to do shows with people like you at your age too. Cause I remember that age of what I was doing at that age. Yeah. And I was like, and I remember that hunger too. And I remember that, like, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get those <laughs> gigs and to it. do those, you know? So it's like, it's also kind of a nice feeling to have this type of, uh, um, What's the foundation? Yeah. Where I like spent so much time emailing everybody in Ottawa that now people who like own the venues that I would be emailing, they know me. They know me. And it feels so great because it's not like they're like itching to just message me, but they also know me. They've heard me play. They like me. They've invited me back. So I'm always a person that they could be like, hey, we're trying to finish or like fill a bill. We'd love if you could hop on it or. This is a small like community. It's being a big fish in a small pond, and I yeah. think Ottawa is a great place to have that, especially before I go to like a bigger city like Toronto or Montreal. It's nice to have a strong foundation in the place I started with all the loyal people who've supported me through it. And I just think it's like a great place to figure out, especially for me, where I am literally as confused as can possibly be, um, to figure out how to brand and how to network from the very bottom something like things i've never done before and to see other people doing it and taking notes you know, i'm just well, i'm just pointing at you because i'm like saying i'm agreeing with oh, you yes no, yeah I'm, like, I'm not telling you to stop that's not <laughs> yeah. a tv signal to stop I'm just, no <laughs> but i'm just agree- i'm countering your point like i'm agreeing with your point yeah. like yes i concur and it's absolutely yeah. a learning curve i definitely did not know how to network th- a year ago the way I know how to network now and I still think I could do better. Well, how would you without experience? You don't have the experience, you don't know. You're getting experience now so you're really Mm -hmm. knowing like you're at a really young age which is fantastic. So it's like, I think we might have a customer soon. Oh, we do. Or maybe a drunk off the street. We might have actually a good guest here. We pull in a guest. A friend. I think we're going to take a break here on the Focus Podcast with Neha Sin. We're going to see what's going on here <laughs> no. maybe a straggler <laughs> be back after this hey darling hey darling i won't sleep tonight hey darling hey darling stay up till to hear your voice 
To the Focus Podcast. Because what else you got to do? Check, check, one, two. Still sounds good. Hello. We are having a secret Marxist meeting back here in (laughs) the communist uh, bar (laughs) in uh, Ottawa. So (laughs) I get off off the stage in Peterborough two Mm -hmm. nights ago. And some guy comes up to me and he goes, are you a Marxist? And I was like, no, I don't think so. Not really. <laughs> That's a great question. I guess my, my lyrics might come off like that a little mm. bit, you know? It's very, my dad calls it, quote unquote, anti-establishment. Oh. But I think I've kind of veered off that. Like the first album was very like, you can really put it on the left wing side. And then the second album was kind of, I don't know if you want to categorize it at that or whatever. Yeah. But it's just... It was thought one way, and then my last album was kind of darker, diving into that darker part of your subconscious and kind of like flirting with that. And I'm glad I did because it's like it's out of my system. And it's just like displaying it on art is such an important thing to do. And now I feel like this one I'm working out, I'm so balanced. Like I'm so good with everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm good with my my flaws i'm good with my accomplishments i'm good with where i'm at you know so it's like a a nice even balance you know very true so we were just kind of touching on that as we were off to break Mm -hmm. before the secret call me meeting broke out in the back (laughs) sure (laughs) hey we got customers there's more there's more people than performers now so i'm happy incredible yeah it's bumping, if you will. <laughs> Three whole other people have joined us. Anyways, we were talking about your your journey here. Mm, my journey. It's just getting started. Just getting started. Much. Although it feels like I've been doing it forever. Yeah, well, if yeah. you've done two years, it's a good percentage of your lifetime. That's true. That's, <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> but that's a my little is, under my 2%. My age and everything is double, right? So yeah. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> I don't know. It's it's fun. It is. It's just a little stressful sometimes. Like I know. I hear you. Cause like me doing all this road stuff is costing me money, mm. and oh, uh, sometimes you break even, but that's like best case scenario. Yeah. Most of the time, and so you need to find ways, and you just need to figure out how to budget cut, mm. how to make it work really, and uh, that's what this game is all about. It's just finding your own angles to make it work to Mm -hmm. get your stuff out there to get it heard and 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 played right exactly we got some like very like do husk music going on the back i'm feeling it (laughs) rammstein like very like yeah it's like (laughs) a party (laughs) yeah i feel like we should have some lights back here going on and there's like pictures of lennon on the wall and stuff and Oh, this is awesome. Realize. This is hilarious. This was my first gig I had in Ottawa. Whoa. This was like back in November 2018, I think. And I got it just, I planned it. And uh, I had a gig in Toronto the night before, which was really good with a couple friends of mine. Mm. And they all wanted to go out after. And I'm like, oh, no, I have to be responsible and get on the train and <laughs> and get to Ottawa. So I get here and I made this huge deal about, because my guitar keyboard player was going to school here for law yeah and so it was kind of like good to see him visit him and get a gig here at the same time so i was trying to make it so authentic to get a keyboard and all that it was such a fucking pain in the ass for me to do that like i went all the way to long mcquade's here which is (laughs) out of the (laughs) it is freaking city which makes no sense. It's literally in what, like, Canada? Yeah, or the other way south. It was far. It was fucking far. Yeah, I can't. There's a couple, but they're all not in downtown. Anyways, it was far. It was a big keyboard, and I hauled it all the way here. It was a, a snowstorm, and Oof. 
we barely had any people and then i had to bring it all the way back the next day so it's <laughs> like you learn all these things you're yeah. like okay is it worth doing that if i do all that if you do that you much i recommend just finding a bar that has a piano that's what i was gonna do <laughs> but when i have a saying well i don't know if it's a saying i just kind of like made up my mind that this is the way it is mm -hmm. that every city you go to for the first time you're gonna have to kind of eat shit at a shitty bar or you're gonna have to like g play at a shitty place just to like get your foot into the city or maybe that's just the way it is for me. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know the But it hasn't been like that every time. Yeah. Like, like I played in Seattle in in January, and that was one of the best gigs I ever played. And I was going to say, the first. first show I ever played in Toronto was kind of great. It was at this place called Blue Moon Lounge. It was so cute. It was college. A lot of, yeah. It was really of, fun. Um, I, you know, made money off my merch, and that felt really great. And then okay, so that analogy doesn't apply. <laughs> yeah, and then when a hundred percent, maybe it's like a fifty-fifty thing like that. But so. when I ended up getting lucky and singing in um, Guatemala, I also ended up singing at this like amazing bar that was just candle lit and had like a whole speakeasy section, like a bar that if I found in Ottawa, I would live at. Damn. I would truly just live at. <laughs> and I was so in shock that like. A lot of people or a lot of my friends who had been to Guatemala just didn't know about it because I was like, you would die for this place. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like I've had pretty like strong first shows at places like that. Fuck my analogies. But I've only, <laughs> I've only done it to three places, so I could be wrong. I still have many other places I'd like to sing at. And yeah, you never the, know, well, they could go know, to I, shit. <laughs> everybody's journey is different, right? Mm -hmm. it's, everybody's journey is different. That's the good thing about it. And it's True. like... Very just true. like there's no way of really telling anybody to do it mm -mm. at all do you have any advice no no <laughs> just try your best yeah Things will please work out. don't give any advice or don't yeah i don't think advice is the way to do it it's just this you know we're doing it exactly just uh trial and error and not doing that again kind of just hoping for the best at this point and like I don't know, there well, are definitely you're young, times you that got you got that optimism age going. Yeah, you? <laughs> <laughs> you know things will work out, and even if they don't, it's not the end of the world. Like worse things could happen. Absolutely, you could have the virus, the coronavirus. No. See, I don't really care that much about that. Like I care no. about it in the sense that like I hope people are okay, and I don't want people to die. But I truly just think it's becoming this big deal and everybody's just focusing on the fact that some people have died. I'm sorry, the flu's killed more people. That's true. Also, there have been cases of the coronavirus where people have been cured and nobody's talking about that. I just it doesn't think sell. It, the only people they really kill are people with a lowered immune system, old people and children. You're weak people. You're weak. Weak people. <laughs> no. But just people. like, I don't know. I feel like it's getting blown out of proportion and it's becoming Oh, yeah, a, that's the news. It's just becoming a reason for people to be racist towards Asian people. Oh, and I'm yeah. not saying everybody, but it is a huge problem that people are now throwing this in like an oh, Asian community. Oh, because people don't know. They just get triggers from no. the news. They're like, this is somebody to be mad at. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a friend of mine, he was traveling with me in Seattle and he had planned to go to uh, China. And I'm like, aren't you glad you're in Seattle, Washington with me? <laughs> I think I'd rather be in China than America right now, well, to be you know honest. What? It's, here's the thing. It's not as... The one thing that threw me off is like subtlety uh, pleasantries. From day to day people. America's in not Canada, bad. It's just America's like kind of terrifying right now. It is, but it's also like there's good pockets. Mm. But it's there weird are. because you know how like we're over we're over polite here in Canada. Mm -hmm. There's none of that there. No. Even there's like there's less small talk kind of it's it's weird. Just little things like um, that are different. When I was going to Guatemala with my friend, we had to take three different flights. And it was from here to New York, New York to Atlanta, oh. and then Atlanta New to York Guatemala. Sucks. I, For yes. the airport. Okay, here's the thing. I love New York because it's, you know, the, the airport, city that never so sleeps. Airport. And it's awake and alive. And, you know, the city of dreams. And that's my entire heart. 
but the airports, you're correct, were Suck. brutal. And it wasn't even just that. In Atlanta, too, my friends and I were just walking around and people were just like rude and like really blunt. And we were just like, why is everybody so mean here? We went to a restaurant and the server was just like rolling her eyes at us. And we were like, what is going on? And then we realized it just is like Canadian, you know, politeness that wasn't everywhere. And we were like, what is happening? Exactly. We missed Canada. <laughs> that threw me off too. Cause it's like even a very liberal city, mm. Portland. And, and I didn't get any pleasantries in Portland. It was like, some people had it. Some people, yeah, you know, there yeah. were, but that's just me. And I was kind of raised by an East coaster too. So mm. it was like all please and thank you all the time. Right. Oh, absolutely. So it's like, it's also just, you know, manners. And yeah. Whatnot. <laughs> just like, yeah. Easy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Filling in a conversation. But, but I mean, every place has its problems. Canada isn't really doing too great with all of the Wetsu Wetan things no. right now. Truly well, there's a lot of issues that have <laughs> should have been addressed and haven't it's been It's just addressed. weird. The older you get, the more you learn about problems in the world and the sadder it is. Because then you try and you want to help. I've been to rallies and I still am just like, wow, police are just still going to do whatever they want to. You know what's ironic is this song I did, Stay Focused, mm -hmm. I wrote it about the, the water protectors while that was going on like four years ago. Remember the one in Dakota? Yeah. Like the really... Uh, a publicized one so that was like part of the lyrics or thought process that i was around when i was writing that song so now i'm on that tour that i've named that but it's kind of like it's also i'm writing about that but at the same time i'm like hindered by travel <laughs> because at the <laughs> same time but no i'm not actually it's all cleared up now yeah so it's all good my timing is impeccable <laughs> but no it's like i wrote that about those people who were fighting for that yeah. and um while we were i was shooting the video in seattle we were down we saw this like little gazebo we we're gonna shoot by there and right on the water it's all this like government signs saying there's a big toxic spill there and stuff i'm like wow. this is exactly what i was kind of talking about yeah so we rolled on it wow <laughs> yeah it's crazy yeah, well, you know what? I'm excited for you because, you know, you got the drive, you got the passion, you got, you know, you're getting your own style, you're getting your own sound. I'm starting to find own, what I want to sound, sound like. And my lyrics you know? are, thank God, finally getting better. <laughs> that takes a long time. It That's does. I didn't realize it would. So, like, I do still love the songs I wrote two years ago. I'm just finding that the way I write now is a bit more telling of how I want to sound and the things I want to say. Well, lyrics are a reflection of experiences too yeah yeah so let's you'll get more yeah oh, tell me about <laughs> it no but you're on the right track already you know it's like you got the right attitude you know you're focused focus you know you're uh, absolutely and right it feels drive. good it's also just because i just graduated things have been a little strange and i've been kind of losing motivation a bit yeah mainly because you know, when you have school and work and music, you're always like on top of it all. Well, sometimes it's good to like take a sidestep uh. and do something else that you're interested in. Yeah. Or just take a breather oh. and then, you know, reevaluate it. And, and I've done that several times. Yeah. Uh, but, you know. I think I did that when I went to Guatemala. And I think I'm doing yeah, that reset. when I run away to Spain in April. <laughs> oh, you're going to Spain? I'm going to Spain. Nice. It was Black Friday weekend, and I was having the crisis of graduating, <gasps> and I just bought tickets. Dope. <laughs> yeah. But this one was a little more planned. I'm for going how long? to. I'm um, just for a ten, d 10 days? No, 12. 10 days. We're going to say 10. Somewhere in that realm. Whereabouts? Um, I'm actually going to meet one of my really close friends who's in madrid uh, doing an exchange for school so um, we're starting in madrid and we've planned it all out everything's booked and we're very excited and we're gonna do the coast of spain going along the mediterranean sea i was just gonna say do that because yeah. we're gonna go up to barcelona and then we're gonna take a train to tarragona then to castillon de la plana and then we're gonna end in valencia bomb i know i'm s i'm if there's so any excited. place to play it's, it's that coast yes 
That's the shit. I don't know how much I'm going to play just because I can't really take my guitar with me since I'm just backpacking. But if the opportunity arises again, I will be there. <laughs> that um, the place in Dominican I go to all the time, mm-hmm. that bar I played at on the beach that I told you about, mm-hmm. there's a musician that I met there who's a phenomenal singer, and he plays flute and all that, but... In the off season, he lives on the coast of Spain there, oh. and he tours all along that coast. Oh my god! And he's like seventy years old, and he still does it. Oh my god! But his band—he had this wild story about like how his band opened up for Queen before they. He's been around the block, but yeah, he said that he goes to that coast mm-hmm. a lot. So you should probably, and you will. It won't. I don't think it'll be hard for you to find places to play. I bet not, Maybe. but we're only in these places for not very long. Just, so. just look up open mics. Just oh, absolutely. I'm sure my friend knows some because one of her roommates plays oh, open then mics. You'll know. Oh, yeah. They're, you're golden. <laughs> It'll be good. You're we'll good. have a good amount of oh, time. Oh, that's to do so things. dope. I'm happy yeah, for you. I'm very excited. That's such a good experience. It'll like just be I another did. fun excuse to run away for a little bit, <laughs> which I'm really enjoying. Uh, that's called my 30s. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> No, it was, it was like pay taxes. No, I'm going to Italy again this summer. I'm just gonna go back. <laughs> I went six times in my 30s to Europe, and I did all that shit. I went and played in Amsterdam, London, Amsterdam, Paris. Stop. My dream is to go to Amsterdam. Um, uh, Italy. I played. On, I did a week in Budapest. Mm. I did. So now I have all these links too. So. Do it when you're young. Oh, Do I, it. That's once I have m- more money to just blow on money. that. <laughs> Get it? You I'm don't have going. time. I'm telling you, it's 40 years old. I'm. I sit back. 40 at, is not even that old. I know, old. but I, I sit back at 40 and I'm like, I'm glad I did all that fucking okay. crazy shit. Kind of wish I did it when I was like 30s. 17 and 18, when it was even less of a like burden to travel. Yeah, but that's hard though. Like unless you got people with money in your family. Yeah. That can help you out with that shit. <laughs> that's tough. See, I didn't really get money until I was 30. So it's like I struggled for a while in my mm-hmm. 20s just to I was able to go to the Caribbean and here and there, but Yeah. I kind of want to see if I can do a cruise line. Don't do any fucking cruises now. You're going to get that fucking sickness. Oh, I don't care. And you'll be I docked don't care. somewhere. If that's how I die, that's how I die. No, I know, but that's, <laughs> you want the ultimate paranoia. That's the ultimate paranoia. <laughs> There's like, even countries like Dominican, they're like, we don't want that shit here. We're fucking, <laughs> they're turning them I did away a Dominican at. cruise when I was 16. It was so yeah. good. I don't know. Cruises, I don't think I'm a, a cruise person. So good. Yeah? Oh, so fun. I don't know. I have never done it, so I, I'm just being a hypocrite. Oh my god! If you were to ever be on a cruise, it would change you. Mm. I was like, it was just a family vacation, and I definitely wasn't old enough to have the real fun of a cruise. Yeah. But I think if I were to go back now, I don't it know. would be I'm to like perform on the cruise, and it would involve all of the fun things about yeah. the cruise. I like chaos a little. I like being thrown into a city and having mm. to figure shit out, mm. and kind of like, like yeah, okay, I didn't get hustled here. This is good. <laughs> I love hostels. I live. No, I hostels. didn't get hustled. I say. Oh, right? hustled. I was, I was like, okay, we're talking about hostels. No, now. I've only been in one hostel. It was in uh, Belgium. Oh. It was awesome, and it was the oldest, one of the oldest hostels ever. And I was with my friends. Uh, now his wife, she worked in Amsterdam, so I met her there. And then she's like, "You got to go to this Bruges mm. in Belgium," and uh, so I went there. There's that movie that was made about it, and they're saying how boring it is there. Anyways, it's it's like some movie with Russell Crowe and these. That sounds about right. These <laughs> killers had to hide from. Anyways. Okay. <laughs> well. So, it was nice. It was cool, and it was like uh, old castle, kind of like. Uh, what time are we at? We're like. It is eight fifteen. Yeah, we should probably wrap up. Yeah. And get our show started. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Sometime well, soon. <laughs> I, you know, I wish you luck on your journey and, Thank and you. you're going to do freaking awesome things. Thank and, you. I and hope so. Blow it up. I mean, if not, at least I'm having fun doing it. Hey, man, you're already <laughs> doing this at this age. This is pretty cool. Thank so, you. Thanks uh, for having me on your podcast. No worries. Yeah, we'll get this out eventually. I'm going to get, I'm trying to get onto a routine here now. And Hell yeah. Yeah. So we got a show coming up and, uh, Check out Neha Sin all over the place, and I'll put the That's links and the, the tags and all that. And uh, focused, <laughs> focused. <laughs> it's like when I was in Paris, this guy, uh, he uh, 
called my name to the stage. He was like, "Fuck us, please come to the stage, fuck us." <laughs> so this wraps up the fuck us podcast podcast number fourteen. I can't even fucking talk today. Okay. Have a great night. Good night. <laughs> you came for a weekend and stayed for a year. You made my home your own. I am still asking why you're still here as you're tossing your clothes on my floor. And I feel crooked again like the pictures that hang on my wall. There's no rent you pay. You've got a place in my mind You've got a place in my mind The neon sign shines brightly, you see And it reads quite lightly, no vacancy Cause you've got a place in my mind You've got a place in my mind That I've planted have since bloomed and died They're saying it's time to go Your hands are clean and the mud is on mine You've killed my chance to grow And I am broken, I admit Like the dishes that sit in the sink There's no rent you pay yet You still stay You've got a place in my mind You've got a place in my mind The neon sign shines brightly, you see And it reads quite lightly, no vacancy You've got a place in my mind You've got a place in my mind I need you to go I need you to leave I need you to go I need you to leave I need go I need you to leave I need you to go and give me room to breathe and I know when you leave that I'll still believe that you've got a place in my mind